Right lads, welcome back to another video, and this one, as you've seen by the title, the thumbnail, etc, etc, is going to be about... Oh, the man, the myth, the legend, Kevin Nisbet, goal scoring machine. Fresh off the back of our Kevin Nisbet hat-trick yesterday, and five goal contributions so far this season in the first two games of the Premiership campaign, I sat down the day with Hibs Talk podcast member Gavin and we spoke about Kevin Nisbet, the Hibs team, etc, etc. Hopefully you enjoy this different type of content. First time I've recorded a Zoom call, so it was a new experience for me, and I hope you enjoy the new type of content. I can do this more if you like it, and aye, we'll see how it goes. As I said, if you do like it, let me know, and also like the video, and subscribe for more of this type of content in the future, if you do indeed enjoy it, as I've said plenty of times now. Let's get into the video. Only Kev, yes. First time I've recorded a Zoom call, actually. So. <laughs> right, so we've got Gavin on from the Hibs Talk podcast. Cheers for coming on. Oh, wait. False alarm. Telly. There we go. So we've got Gavin on from the Hibs Talk podcast here. Cheers for coming on, Gavin. I'm nah, happy to come on. So first up, I suppose just talk to me about Kev, your first impressions of him both on and off the pitch. Yeah, I've been very impressed. Um, I think, like say, I... Um, then the, the sort of press conference with him when he first signed and he was talking about, you know, how he kind of really wanted this move to happen and how he, he's been using lockdown to get in better shape and things like that. So, you know, his attitude seems great. Um, and then obviously going off the first two games, he's played with two different partners, Boyle the first game. And then even, even in saying that, that the Gallic game, Boyle went out wide. So he had a bit of experience playing up top of it on his own. And obviously he sort of played with Nisbet, Edward Dodge yesterday and for a bit against Kamarnock. So, Already we've seen him play again, you know, um, against with two different partners and on his own. And yeah, there's a lot of really exciting things from him so far. Obviously, when he first joined, I saw of, so I was following it all myself because he's moved from my club. And yeah, he, put, he posted that picture on Instagram of him as a boy um, in mm. one of the Hibs squads. So it was obviously a move that once Hibs were interested, there was probably only one destination he wanted to end up at, despite the fact that we thought. And the United, maybe a team down south, but I'm quite pleased that he's turned up at Hibs to be fair because he's always have a good reputation of like selling players on for good fees and stuff like that. And no doubt in my mind that Kevin Nisbet will go on to bigger and better things in his career. Um, mm -hmm. People are already claiming that he's going to get a Scotland cap, so um, it's quite impressive that he's made such an impact so far, despite the fact that he'd never played Premiership football before that. Yeah, he's taken to it really well, and like I say, I think there is, I mean, hopefully, from, from your point of view, I guess, I hope Dunfermline have been sensible and put on a sell-on clause, because nice. um, I think that there's, there's going to be an opportunity for him to, I mean, do that as well. Like I say, I think this is a good gradual move for him, rather than jumping into something, um, maybe in England or something. Um, I think he's got an opportunity Hibs to continue his development, um, get prove that he can do it at this level as well, and then like you say, potentially even Scotland and things like that. Obviously, it's only sort of two games for us, so I'm going to get too carried away. But yeah, I think there's a real <laughs> opportunity for him to like start looking at the Scotland squad and things like that if he continues to score goals like he has been in the past and like he started to do so early on at Hibs. Obviously, you talk about the goals there. Obviously, I think I saw a tweet earlier or something like he scored 60 goals in his last 80 games or something like that. So it's an incredible start, really. Um, and the amount, like the goals that he's scored, the assists also for last week's game. Mm -hmm. It's a variety of finishes and contributions to the team, which can only go to help the team as a whole. Yeah, um, I was delighted to put him as my captain as my fantasy football team this week, <laughs> you know, an assistant and a hat trick. So that's worked out quite well. I was getting a lot of um, sick for her, everyone else having Edward last week. But yeah, uh, he's, uh, he, he's, he's, like I say, I think um, he's, a lot of people were saying, oh, can he make the step up? to this level and to me I think that's really disrespectful to the championship I think there's a lot of yeah. good teams in the championship and maybe you've got you know you've got your you know Motherwells and Aberdeens and then Celtic Rangers that have got really strong defences but other than that I think the defence level of defences from the championship and the, the rest of the teams in, in mm -hmm. uh, the Premier League aren't that different so yeah. I mean the guy scores goals I mean 60 goals in 40 games or something is crazy he's going to continue to score goals as he's already shown um, and yeah I um, really excited about what you can do. So obviously the Hibs squad, it's not only Kevin Nisbet, despite how much mm. money kind of pushed that narrative. <laughs> um, the players around him are obviously going to benefit him. You saw players like Daryl Horgan coming into the squad yesterday. I've seen a lot of praise for Joe Newell, etc. as well. You've got Martin Boyle, of course, and Scott Allen. 
a load of players that can provide good delivery for Kevin. Um, it's a cracking squad that he's are putting together, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I think Jack Ross has spoke about his frustration not being able to sell, sign more players. Um, I think he mm-hmm. spoke about how eight players have went out and have brought in three. Um, and then that's where a lot of the young laddies are kind of bulking out the squad. But if I'm honest, I'm all right with that. I think you know, there's some really exciting young laddies there. And a lot of people say about you know, Doherty or, or somebody like that in the middle of the park. But I'm like, well, you know, yesterday we, we, we scored four goals with Scott Allen not playing. Um, mm-hmm. Gogic, um, who's really been a, a key player that we kind of missed. And then, like say, Newell, who's been brilliant. And Daryl Horgan yesterday, like say, he's been a very hit and miss player uh, in his spell. So Hibs, you can see he's got that ability. But yesterday he was picking up the ball and he was uh, driving the goal every t- opportunity, getting down that left-hand side. Him and Doig linked up well. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, and obviously he got two assists. So if we can start, if he can take confidence fr- from that and we can start to see the best Daryl Horgan, then that's just going to be even more, um, you know, people getting assisted to, to help uh, Nisbet score more goals. He also talks a wee bit briefly there about uh, the young guy, Josh Doig. Um, he's coming to the squad and being another kind of player that Hibs can now nurture and hopefully end up getting a sell on for in the near future or like in the, in the future at some point. Um, it's those type of players that Hibs tend to really nurture well and then get like end up they go far in their career basically. Yes, it's, it's, it's a bit of an exciting one, Josh. He's, um, I'd also heard that he might be a centre-back. and see, like, I think I actually done Fermlin last season uh, in a pre-season friendly. I'm sure he mm-hmm. played half the game at centre-back. You know, that was me just like, oh, he must be a centre-back then. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he started the season at left-back and he's, he's looking really positive. He's really looking to get the, the ball forward. He's really solid. He was going up against a couple of players yesterday and, you know, was coming at, uh, winning his duels. And, you know, 18-year-old, to, to be able to just sort of come into the Hibs team and maybe it benefits him not having the pressures of fans there and things like that, but yeah. he's taking advantage of that one way or another and he's, he's really doing well. Um, Hibs do have a history of that, like, say, bringing through young players or signing players um, and then selling them on. But I, it, it, that's obviously brilliant, but it can be a bit frustrating. I was speaking about this a couple of weeks ago about how Martin Boyle came in and he was a heedless chicken. We got him on loan for Dundee. <laughs> heedless chicken. Didn't they have a clue what he was doing? He was fast and that was it. And he has developed and he's learned and he's had some advantages, but he's used that time to continue his development. And he's now at 27. He's got the final, final product. He's finally got the final product and he's going to go. <laughs> um, whether now or, or January, like I say. So it's a bit frustrating, like I say, that you, you see players that have got just raw potential and they develop into that exciting player. Um, and then they're never going to stay around when they reach that at Hibs. It's a bit of a... I, I mean, there's a lot of clubs in Scottish football the exact same. Um, and that's just one of the... Uh, football, not to see the players in their prime. Us as football fans, we get invested in the players and stuff like that. Yeah, you kind of gain a bit of a relationship, even though the players don't really realise it at the time. But fans get really attached, and then when it all gets pulled away, you kind of feel a bit like, "No, oh, there you go." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also, um, like the biggest example is John McGinn, who's you know tearing it up yeah. down in England, and yeah. Um, so I, but you could just get 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 to kind of follow their career wherever they go um, and, and see how they sort of continue to develop. So back on in Nisbet, I was on your podcast very briefly about well, whenever he signed about a month or so ago now. Mm. Um, and you asked me the question back then, Nisbet or Shankland, who will score more in the Premiership or who will perform better? Now, of course, it's a bit unfair on Shankland here. He's played one game and was injured in yesterday's game, but he's not scored the Premiership goal yet. And Nisbet has contributed to five overall. So... Mm. I'm going to put the pressure on you to answer the question now. Who will score more goals in the Premiership this season? I think we're going to go Nisbet, aye. Um, I think there's, you know, Dundee United are going to be finding their feet in the, the Premiership. I don't, I think they have got, you know, a good squad as well, but I don't see Dundee United going straight in and challenging for fifth, fourth, third. I think they're going to have a, maybe a transition in season, first season back. Um, and Shankland, if he's, if he's still there the full season, I, you know, obviously the, the window's open until uh, middle of October, whenever it is in October now. So, um, there, I think, no, I think Nisbet has, has got more of a settled team around him. I think he's got obviously a head start. Um, and I think he's got, like I said, good partnerships around him and stuff. So, yeah, I think Nisbet will. Um, although, in saying that, I do have Shankland in my fantasy football team as well. <laughs> so, I'm hoping that they both do really well. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm starting to change my mind on that one as well. Obviously, I said Shankland at the time, not to put pressure on Kevin. I think that was maybe just a bit. 
uh, still tugging at the heartstrings for me because the feeling was so raw for him leaving. Um, mm. But I think I'll I will go for Kev now because I've always thought that overall on the ball and everything that a footballer needs, I think Kevin is a better player than Shankland. And yeah. stand by that, even though Shankland better goal scorer at Championship level for a couple of seasons, I do think Kev's got more about him on the ball. Um, and he's certainly shown that in the first two games we contributing to the team with assists and scoring a variety of goals as well. So I think I'll go with you there and change my mind for what I said a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely, I think he's, like I said, definitely a head start with the three goals, but the fact he's got contributing with assists as well, his assist last week against um, Kermanek was brilliant. The way he read Boyle's run and mm. just sort of played it to where Boyle was going to be. Uh, he, I, so really excited about all the partnerships around him. And I think, like I say, because of that, I, I think he'll um, out, outperform uh, Shanklin in terms of goals this season. So therefore, how many will he get this season? Oh, that's a good, good question. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's a bit of a, a strange one because it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, you know, I, I don't see Hibs see it scoring, like say if Boyle stays, I don't see Hibs scoring 80 goals or just show between four or five players. I think, I can't remember how many we scored last season, but we need a lot for a lot of players to score that many goals. And uh, I see Dodge scoring about 15, 20 goals again. I this, but I guess he's already got three. So I uh, maybe like say 15, 20 goals would be a good return. I think mm-hmm. he, as long as 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 long as Dodge is scoring goals as well, but if Boyle's chipping in with goals, potentially Horgan, if he can uh, add to goals to, to his game as well as assists, Scott Allen, a few goals then as long as the team's scoring, then great. But yeah, I'll, I'll go for I, I don't know, we'll go for. 18 goals for for Dodge this, eh, for Nisbet this season. That'd be a, a good return for a first season in the, in the Premier League. And you're talking about, obviously, the variety of players that could end up scoring goals. That's only going to be mm. at Hibs as the season goes on, obviously. And the final question I've got is, where will Hibs finish this season? As we're filming right now, they're stopping 10 in a row. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I see. I see. We put a few tweets about that yesterday, like when, when uh, Nisbet got his hat-trick, or I don't know, when Dodge scored up at... Um, we're, we're stopping 10, pass it on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I say, I think, um, I mean, Aberdeen haven't really signed anybody. Obviously, everything that's going on with them is going to mm-hmm. potentially benefit the first few, uh, to take a hit in the first few games. Potentially, might not. Um, but I I think Aberdeen, without strengthening much, um, might struggle to sort of do it. So no, I think there's no reason why we can't aim for third this season. We've got um, one of the best managers in the league. We've got, Real attacking options and Gogic has really seemed to be the missing puzzle towards the defence. The, the, the back four, have, you know, or five when it's been a five, have performed really well. McGinn looks really solid. Doig at left back and Porteous and Hanlon with Gogic in front look a lot more protected. So, no, nah, third, why not? Let's, let's, let's be optimistic and I aim, aim, for, the aim for third. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, that's all I've got really. Um, thanks for coming on, Gavin. Um, I appreciate that, and I'll give your, I'll send out all your links on my video as well for Hibs talk and stuff. I appreciate, appreciate that. Cheers. Cheers.